Hello everyone. My name is Maliha and I'm one of the mentors working with Mac Outreach. In this video, we will be continuing to add to our own knowledge by learning about definitions and commenting. It would be a good idea to refresh your memory by watching lesson one so we can build on those concepts. To begin, we will go to the macoutreach.rocks website and we'll be pressing the animation slot. This is the second image from the left on the top row. It is a moving film icon. First, we are going to learn how to make definitions. I'm going to begin with the code for a heart, which you should have seen in lesson one. A definition is a group of code condensed into a single title. It is as if we have taught the computer a new shape. This is done for simplicity and to make it easier to recreate the code. For example, if I want another heart, I would have to copy the entire code and change the X and Y values for the move transformation. That would be very ineffective if we wanted, say, 10 hearts. Now I will make the code for the heart into a definition. I will name mine heart. When creating a definition, it is important to follow specific rules. Moreover, there is specific syntax that must be followed, such as when creating the definition title, the title much must touch the margin, be right up against the left-hand side. Also, the first letter of the title must be a lowercase. There can be uppercase letters anywhere else in the name of your definition, it just cannot be the first letter. For example, if I write heart, this would not be an appropriate name. But if I write heart with a capital E, that would be appropriate. It is also a good idea to name your definition as something helpful and relating to your code. A good indication to know if your definition name is correct is that it'll, it will turn a green color similar to the my shapes. If you notice, when I had a capital H for heart, the word was not green. This shows it is not an appropriate name. Once you have chosen an appropriate name and it is green, set the definition equal to group. This indicates to the program that the definition is made up of a number of shapes. I will write the equal sign, which is on the top right corner of the keyboard, and then I will write the word group. After setting the definition equal to group, you will now put the code within square brackets. Now I will copy the code I already have as I would like to make this into a definition. Remember to put the closing square brackets as well. Voila, we have created a definition. But if you notice now, when I press compile, nothing actually shows up on the right hand side. This is because all we have done here is created a definition. We have simply taught the computer a shape. We actually need to call the definition now. To call the definition, all you need to do is write the definition name into the my shapes model. Now you can see the heart from earlier. For this lesson, we'll be creating a six of hearts playing card. I'm going to begin by using the shape creator that we were taught in lesson one. I want to create an outline for my card. I will choose a rounded rectangle. I want it to be outlined black. And now I will play around with the values until I am happy. I think this is good. Now I will copy and paste this code. Now I will call on my heart definition and move them into the places I want. Remember to put a comma in between each shape. Since I need six hearts, I will just copy and paste this code and change the values for the move transformation. Now I will press compile we kind of run into an error. The hearts are actually too large. Oh, 
Oh, I forgot one hat. The hearts are too large. We can actually scale that scale down the whole definition. It would be very troublesome to go through each of the hearts in the my shapes model and scale them down. All we need to do is to ensure that we write the transformation outside of the closing square bracket. We need to add the forward piping tool and the transformation that we would like. This will apply the transformation to all the definitions, and this is much easier than going to each individual shape and scaling it down. We are almost done. You may notice something if you have seen a six of hearts playing card before. As you can see in this picture, the last two hearts at the bottom are actually flipped upside down. So we should do this in our code as well. To do this, we can simply scale the hearts that we would like by negative one so they will be flipped. Here is our six of heart playing card. The final thing we will be learning today is commenting. Commenting is used by all programmers. It is a way to communicate and explain code without it actually affecting your code. It is very effective if you are working with others so they can understand your code. I will be teaching you multi-line comments and single line comments. Multi-line comments allow you to comment on multiple lines of code without it affecting your code. It is often used for large text descriptions of code or to comment out chunks of code when debugging. How to use a multi-line comment is to use the curly bracket which you can press shift and the same key as a square bracket and a dash. If you see your text turn orange, this is a good indication that you are currently writing a comment. As you notice, all of, our all of our code has turned orange. This is because we have not put the dash and the closing curly bracket. I will now write a quick small description. If you notice here, I was actually able to write the comment on two different lines. This is why this is called a multi-line comment. A single line comment is for a quick small description and it can be written with two dashed lines. Now I will quickly add a small comment to let myself know where each heart is located. With single line comments, I am unable to write the comment for multiple lines. For example, I can't press return and continue to write. As you can notice, it is not orange, and if I press compile, I will run into an error. This is why these are called single line comments. If I press compile, you will notice that our code has not changed at all. That is the beauty of commenting. We have comments in our code now. That is it for lesson two. Now that we have learned how to create definitions and commenting, you can try to use definitions to create a field of flowers. If you ever get stuck, don't forget that you can type your question or error code into the bottom right hand section of the screen and a mentor will do their best to help you. Another activity that you can try is that you can try to create an image of something you like, for example, a car, and then use definitions to create multiple cars driving on a road. Be sure to add comments in your code to be able to explain what you are doing. Thank you for joining us and see you soon.